How often do we have a model that scores top five in the artificial analysis benchmark, and yet the model is open source? Also, the model is ranked third place in usage from OpenRouter. Minimax just released an open source model called M2. And let's start with why the Minimax M2 model is something that you should really care about. Welcome to Caleb Wright's code, where every second counts. As the name stands, Minimax's goal is to release mini models in size for the purposes of maximum coding and agentic use cases. So the M2 model is the next iteration from the previous M1 model. And here are two reasons why M2 stands out in its architecture, interleaved reasoning and what they call CISPO. And these two factors help score the M2 model in this quadrant that shows the intelligence in the y-axis and price on the x-axis, basically showing that it's the best bang for the buck when it comes to intelligence and price. Also, M2 scored high on the toe squared benchmark, which demonstrates its strong agentic abilities. Let's start with the interleaved reasoning. And there's been quite a lot of posts on X talking about the effectiveness of interleaved reasoning regarding M2. Ever since OpenAI popularized reasoning model in mid-2024, the AI industry saw how much reasoning models demonstrated a clear advantage in intelligence compared to non-reasoning models. So to compete against this, Minimax M2 had to demonstrate its intelligence just as well as traditional reasoning model. But instead of reasoning in the traditional sense, Minimax opted to do things slightly differently, called interleaved reasoning, which was first introduced back in May 2025 on a research paper that showed their effectiveness compared to a traditional reasoning model like you can see here. Let's do a quick review on how reasoning models work. Reasoning models produce a series of reasoning tokens before they actually generate output tokens that we see in our application, whether it's chat or coding. And these reasoning tokens act as a preamble that essentially allow the models to think out loud in a chain of thought. So as you can imagine, producing a large amount of chain of thought could require a lot of compute because you need to dedicate more hardware to essentially think harder depending on the complexity that the user requests. And this kind of computation is called test time compute, which refers to the amount of compute that's designated for reasoning. But Minimax's approach is slightly different than this. The traditional way of reasoning has a disadvantage when it comes to speed and compute cost. What I mean by that is that because the model has to use extra compute during inference to essentially reason longer, generating actual output token takes a long time. In other words, a metric called time to first token shows the latency that traditional reasoning models typically have. Also, knowing how much compute to dedicate can somewhat be arbitrary since the complexity of reasoning can vary from prompt to prompt. Minimax M2 uses a different method, and the idea behind it is pretty simple in theory. Instead of treating reasoning model and output as a separate pockets of information, Minimax blended them together by practically interleaving thought tokens and actual text tokens. This technique, called interleaved thinking, allows the best of both worlds by speeding up the time to first token generation and also the ability to keep reasoning traces that compounds turn after turn. And as you can see, this type of technique is extremely valuable, not only when it comes to costs, but also when it comes to agentic tasks. The interleaved thinking leave traces of its previous reasoning and they're kept within the chat history object, which means agentic tasks that typically have a lot of steps going back and forth can see at any step of its execution, how it reasoned to make decisions up to that point. So as you can see, this improves traceability and ability to recover and self-correct as it performs multiple tasks. And the benchmark here reflects this exactly. Another important component of Minimax M2 is when it comes to post-training by using what's called CISPO since their M1 model. And if you take a look back, China has been a strong player in proposing novel post-training techniques like GRPO from DeepSeek, GSPO from Quen, and now with Minimax's novel post-training method called CISPO. CISPO was initially introduced with the previous M1 model back in June 2025 from Minimax as a novel way of post-training. And compared to existing methods like GRPO and DAPO, it showed a significant improvement in training speed. And the significance here was to focus on adjusting the important sampling weights rather than the tokens, which led to a more stable and efficient training over long sequences. And recently, a research team in Meta confirmed that Minimax's CISPO method as the most stable way to scale reinforcement learning steps, even though they found that scaling in reinforcement learning tends to scale in a sigmoid pattern like you can see here. Okay, now let's look at how the model actually performs in the real world by using it in the Minimax agent. I tasked the Minimax agent to write me a dashboard that runs deep research to gather all publicly available information on AI companies and how funding has been going on from company to company, including venture capitals, hyperscalers,
Mars, Neo Clouds, and more. And as you can see, Minimax Agent was able to complete this dashboard just as I had asked, demonstrating the speed, cost, and its ability to reason through a somewhat exhaustive task. To try out the model Minimax Agent, feel free to check out the link in the description. And this top tier open source AI model can be useful whether you're a developer, researcher, or AI enthusiast. Feel free to check out the model to see its powerful reasoning and also cost-effective model that helps you build smarter, faster workflows with M2.